But let's now speak to the former chaplain to the Queen, Dr Gavin Ashenden, who joins us now. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on GB News. It's a great pleasure to speak to you this Sunday. Um, we reflect that the Queen, we believe, has actually been involved in planning her own funeral tomorrow to make it a very personal event, including, we understand, instructions not to make it too long. Yes, <laughs> that was one of her usual instructions. Um, the Queen has experienced more, more sermons and more services and, in Anglican churches than almost anyone alive. And one of the ways you could please her would be to keep it succinct. And she's applied the same rules to her own funeral. So I, it, actually, I think it's part of uh, her sense of humor and putting her stamp on the matter. She, she liked it done well uh, and briefly and to the point. But something very personal as well in terms of the readings and particularly the music, because we will have something very poignant, I gather, at the end, which will be the uh, a Lone Piper's Lament. Yes. Well, as you know, she's descended from the Scottish monarchy uh, through her mother. And um, uh, Scotland, Balmoral, was one of the places where she was most at home. So it will be no surprise at all that she puts in something, a signature tune of some Scottish culture. So uh, she, every detail will have been passed before her. Uh, it it will have, must have been quite taken some courage to sit down and plan your own funeral, but she'll have done that over the years. And what we're going to have tomorrow is going to be what she has chosen for herself. So this will be very personal to her because, of course, people have said, in addition to her being the, the head of the Church of England, religion and, and her faith was something very personal to her too. Yes, she's one of these people who lived her faith. She wasn't just the formal supreme governor. I mean, supreme governor is a, is a title. She, she didn't actually do any governing. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it was a way of keeping the, the Pope and his influence at bay. But um, she said her prayers. She believed in Jesus. Uh, she, and you can see the way in which, as she grew older, she grew more beautiful. There was some real vivacity in her soul, uh, which is one of the signs that people are living a relationship with God and taking it seriously. Her smile, her twinkliness, her sense of humor, all these were signs of the spiritual nourishment that she received. And so as she prepared her funeral, she would have done it with a great sense of peace of mind and knowing perfectly well that at some point we're called, called to give up our bodies and to surrender our souls into God's hands, which she did cheerfully. And, and was that something that she felt most at ease with in, in fairly simple surroundings such as Crathy Kirk at Balmoral? Yes, I mean, for all, for the fact that she was a very rich and uh, woman and, and notionally very powerful, she lived a very simple life. I mean, she was brought up abstemiously after the Second World War, um, and uh, um, she was surrounded by luxurious trappings, but she didn't live a luxurious life. She lived a very simple life, full of integrity and, and, and very straightforward, and uh, the Christian faith marked the values that she lived by. 